Welcome back to the Hank Strange Situation, Lifestyles of the Locked and Loaded. So, for, so what would you say to the people out there that are saying like, okay, all of this stuff is going on with the NRA, we don't hear from Colin Noir, we don't know where he's at with bump stocks or suppressors and, you know, they just want to hear from you. What would you say to those people? <laughs> huh? Yeah, what would you say in response to... Yeah. I've, I've, I've made pretty blatant statements about bump stocks. I okay. think a lot of people, I think what a lot of people don't understand is one, when I'm, when I'm, especially when I'm filming and I'm traveling, it's hard for me to put videos out on YouTube. So mm -hmm. sometimes what I'll do is I'll put, I'll make statements via open letters. Like for instance, the, the Philando, the Philando Castillo situation, right? Mm -hmm. I found out about the verdict being handed down when I was getting off a plane, getting ready to film something in Utah. So at that moment, I'm walking to the airport, I get a call from the guardian and like, we would like to get your thoughts on what, on the verdict for Philando Castillo. Like, what are you talking about? Like, I just got off a plane. So at that moment, I went back to where I was staying and literally opened my, my, uh, opened my laptop and typed out 500 word um, open letter about the situation mm -hmm. um, and, put it, and passed it out there because I didn't have the camera equipment set up where I could put, it, put together a video and then just say something about it. Same thing with the bomb stock thing. Um, I put out several tweets about my um, with my blog, or I wrote a post about it on my blog, and then I've done. I did ended up doing several interviews where I was asked explicitly, you know, how do I feel about bump stocks, and do I think they should be banned? And I was like, nope. Mm -hmm. So I, I think what ends up happening is because the audience that I have is, I don't want to say sex segmented is the wrong word, but I, I have a large audience on multiple platforms. So I have I have a large our large audience on Instagram. I have a large audience on Twitter, Facebook, and YouTube. And right. then there's not a lot cross-pollination between those two because for instance instagram skews a lot younger mm -hmm. um whereas facebook tends to skew a lot older and so the people who are on facebook generally aren't going to be on instagram and vice versa so yeah. if i put something out on, on instagram or facebook they are on instagram they might not see it on facebook or may not see it on youtube so forth and so on yeah so i think that's what might have happened in that regard with people in terms of my stance on the bump stock um how it could be missed or lost on a lot of people but i I've, I've spoken up about it and i've said my piece about it mm -hmm. So, I mean, if, you know, I, like like you said, I think that you have spoken up about it. But for those people who haven't heard about it, what what's your opinion? Can we go back to because right now I think there's court cases and all that going on. There's uh, lawyers for families and stuff like that suing, suing the gun companies right now. I, you know, all the stuff. I, I, I thought so when, when the bump stock decision was handed down, well, that's the bump stock decision. When the whole debacle regarding the bump stock mm -hmm. situation came down for me. I, I, I was right there watching what was going on, especially in Congress. And there were a lot of Republican senators who were willing to bring a bill to the floor to ban bump stocks. And for them, a lot of these congressmen were either the people who barely won the district or they were in purple states. Mm -hmm. And you had, you, had one, you had one senator out of Florida who was literally bringing the bill on his own accord. And this is a Republican we're talking about here. Yeah, I think a lot of, yeah, I think a lot of people misconstrued. Yeah, like Republicans aren't. A lot of these Republican congressmen are not gun people. Nope. They're not. They really honestly follow lockstep and just to go the opposite direction, like was the case with the senator in Florida who wanted to bring the bump stock bill to the floor. Now, taking that into account, you have to understand this. If I'm a congressman and all I'm worried about is, is my votes in my elections, and I have a constituency that's kind of down the middle on the issue. When you talk about bump stocks, remember, the, the congressman is not, gun, is not a gun guy, and a lot of the constituency are gun people. And so all they see is a piece of plastic that turns a gun into a fully automatic weapon. Mm -hmm. So now what you so from the from the politician's mindset, he's like, wait, so you mean tell me I'm going to have to be on record defending machine guns? Because that's what the constituency hears. Mm -hmm. So it makes them scared and they say, OK, well, it's not a gun. So it's, I'm not going to get a lot of blowback from. So let me go ahead and just ban. Let me just go ahead and propose to ban this piece of plastic, because you know what? I'm going to look like the hero. Right. Mm -hmm. And so. To my constituency on the other side, that's a little more moderate. Um, so he needs a good internet connection. I have fiber wire. Who's yeah, talking? yeah. I think I think I don't think we could do much about this. I think it's just the way the internet's going today. <laughs> so yeah, <laughs> um, you know, it could be. I, I'm. I we don't know who it is right now, I, and I don't think it's either one of us. Like we've got everything shut yeah, down here. Yeah. On our side, yeah, it's just the, the internet's going real bad today. And I think what people don't understand about the internet is that there's not a lot of people that are servers, that have servers going. You know what I mean? There's, yeah. a, there's a few companies out there that really have the server farms, and everyone else is beholding to them. 
And we actually need to change that. We need to change that. And this is probably the reason why. Because when one thing goes down, it kind of has a ripple effect. Like IG is not working. It's not doing anything with Facebook. You know, um, so everyone and then with everyone else piling on to the other social medias that are working, that slows everything down even more. So um, that's what we got going on. So what, whatever, oh, we'll get through it, uh, you know. <laughs> yeah. So um, tunis in a sense, they say I don't have to I don't want to be on record defending machine guns. And then at the same time, I can look like a hero to the people, to my constituency that's a little more centrist. So, uh, especially on the issue of firearms. So it's like, okay, let's ban this thing that turns guns into machine guns. That's what mm -hmm. we're gonna do. We're gonna, we're gonna jump on it before the other people do, right? Mm -hmm. Problem with that is, the NRA, as far as I knew, didn't want, to ban, didn't want them banned. However, okay. at the same time, you're still asking a congressman who's not a gun guy, who's only worried about elections, to defend what he essentially thinks is a machine gun. Mm -hmm. So what, so what ends up happening is there is a there's a change of strategy that needs to take place, right? It's, it, I, I call it providing cover, right? And so the way I looked at it, and I, I agreed with the strategy, um, and, and this strategy inevitably didn't work. And I'll tell you, and I'll get to the right. reason Are why. we talking about the whole, like, 3D chess thing that came up? Exactly. That, that, exactly. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And so the strategy, because I'll tell you what, so for me, I look at the situation and being as close as I was to it. I could see the the, the 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 vehement pushback, so to speak, and just say, you know what? Nope, no banning, that's it, right? Mm -hmm. We would have lost. That was an absolute guaranteed loss. So there was a calculated risk. There was the idea that, you know what? And I'm not speaking for them. I'm, I'm telling you from my observation, this is what I think went down. There was this notion that, that says, all right, we have the ATF over here who has ruled on these bump stocks multiple times. We don't have the time. We just had one of the worst mass shootings in this country's history. We don't have time to sit here and we don't have the time to educate the public on the distinctions between a bump stock, fully automatic, semi-automatic, all of that stuff, especially if it goes to the floor in Congress, because they were pushing that through because they knew that the emotions were very high right now and they would be they would be able to garner the sentiment. They would be able to garner a positive sentiment for a, a bill that not only banned bump stocks, but a ton of other stuff um, on the floor of Congress, surely based off of the emotion alone. That's funny. Somebody said there is jamming the feet. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Who knows? <laughs> From this perspective, um, what 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 I what I looked at as the strategy was to say let's punt it over to the ATF so that Congress so no one in, no one Congress even has to vote on it. None of these Republicans who are kind of scared and kind of light footed on the issue don't even have to vote on it and be on record voting for it. Mm -hmm. And so you punt that over to the ATF and like the ATF, the same organization that's ruled on the bump stock twice in our favor. You punt it over to them. By the time they go through the entire process, the comment process, and all of those things. I mean, the emotion, the emotions of what had happened would have would have died down a bit. Mm -hmm. Right. So they thought the, like strategy wise, they thought those guys wouldn't change their mind because they looked at it tw two, three times already before that. Not only not only would they not change their minds, they technically couldn't. Right. And and in, and when the NRA handed out when the NRA made this, you got to remember that statement was made by lawyers. Mm -hmm. Right. So I understood why people read it and was like, oh, my God, they're telling them to ban. I was like, that was a statement made by lawyers. And at the same time, if I'm if I'm trying to tell you to pay attention to hand over here, that actually has a rock in it. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to write a statement that's going to sound like it's doing one thing when it's really doing another. And mm -hmm. so what it is, it's, it's punting over to the ATF. Mm -hmm. the, 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 the one of the directors of the ATF was literally like they know we can't do anything with this. That's right. why they're punting it to us. So he literally said. So and I think were you aware that like uh, d did you see the things where. Um, LaPierre, I think even Chris Cox were coming out and saying that they that the NRA wasn't for machine guns anyway, you know, that they supported the ban on machine guns and things like that. Did you see any of that information that was coming out? Okay. But that was out there at the time. Was it? Yeah. Was, was, it, was that what they said? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, because uh, LaPierre did an interview at the time. This wasn't even like old stuff. He did an interview where at the you time know, I, he was... I do remember I do remember that interview. There was a subsequent one too where he pulled back on that statement as well. Okay. Yeah, yeah. there was. There was. Because I remember seeing that interview and I went. What's going yeah. on? Yeah, that's weird. Yeah. Um cover. But the biggest fear, I think, was the idea that these these senators were gonna be on record defending machine guns. Mm -hmm. Now, you and I don't have a problem with that. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. But we are talking about people who are not gun people. And we're already we're, we're we're struggling we're struggling now to keep them from trying to ban semi-automatic rifles. Yeah, right. Well, so Much how did that flip? 
So how did that flip though? If we, if if we thought and 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 we all debated this. I'm not trying to you know yeah. re argue that whole thing. I think it was like everyone got up in arms. Everyone was going at each other. I'm included in that whole thing. How did uh-huh. how did it come out this way when when there were there were people who thought yeah there's no way they're gonna look at this and go nope we already said these aren't machine guns. How did that all flip? Trump. Okay. Long and short of it. That's that's the long and short of it. Everything was going just fine. Literally. Mm-hmm. They went went through the review process. They were pretty much gonna come out with the same same conclusion that they came out with before. Mm-hmm. Then Trump directed them to ban them so, unilaterally. Yeah. So um